Yeah. In the cabin. I got to do one thing. I always forget to do that. Too busy bloody yapping, and then I completely forget to do that. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, uh, let me just share this out a second. We're still recovering from Saturday. We really are. Saturday was good fun, as usual, but my God, I'm knackered. <laughs> just a little bit. Oh, I don't know. A very, A very tiring night, but well worth it. It always is. It always is. It's nice. I mean, one of the main reasons I like doing it is it's good to uh, uh, see old friends. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think probably that was ultimately what it was, wasn't it? It was all like friends all getting together. We all knew each other. Yeah. Um, and you know, have have some dinner, and then go off out and, and enjoy ourselves, even though it was freezing cold. <laughs> oh yes, it was. Very, 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 very cold. Yeah. Um, I mean, we even had our heated body warmers with us. It was that cold. And even though the battery packs didn't last that long, um, <laughs> they, That's they, they, they did the job. Yeah. That's because you had it set on vibrate. We all know that. Evening, Bill. Hi, Sarah and Eric. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me but, come on. Uh, yeah. Did you did you hear that um, the EVP that them them people call? Yes, I did, and it, it was. I'm. I don't know. I don't know because normally with EVPs, <laughs> normally with VB, EVPs, BBPs, normally with <laughs> lines, um, it's distant, muffled, whatever. But that was clear as crystal. Yeah, I'm, I mean, obviously, and you can hear a bloke's voice as well. I was, I was, well, I was still, I was, I stood there with them after you, you walked away. I was still standing there with them, and I noticed something which didn't make much sense. Hmm. Now, they were all, uh, uh, if some of you may be um, aware of uh, the church farm in Skegness, some of you won't be, but basically, the church farm in oh, Skegness gotcha. is an old farm uh, that has been. Built around a housing estate has been built around this old farm house and, and buildings. And uh, some of the uh, people were out investigating the Nissan huts there, and they had taken this EVP. Not to be confused with the Datsun huts. <laughs> and basically, they, um, they were asking questions, they were calling out. And on the EVP, it shows, and there's a lady's voice says, I can't, it's too high to reach. And then there's a funny, uh, I described it, it, I described it as a, like a, a marmoset. set. It was a, like a sort of noise. It was a squeak. Hmm. Um, but I noticed on the actual EVP monitor itself, you hear the lady's voice and there's no recognition of that lady's voice being there at all. Right, then as okay. soon as you hear that squeaky noise, it peaks, it goes boom, and then it slowly eases off. But that lady well, voice doesn't even register. Well, you hear a bloke's voice say something like it can't be done, and then the lady's voice goes, I'm the tallest, but I can't reach it. It's too high. Yeah. And then you hear the squeak. Uh, but yeah. the lady's voice does not register on the graph, on the actual call, the on readout. Room. It doesn't register until you get to that squeak noise. And then, and then it registers. Very but that strange. lady's voice was loud enough to have been picked up by that monitor, and it would have shown. I will tell you something, Kelly. That that, that that woman's voice. It was literally like you know when you just you, you know when you're going around and you're getting your EVPs and stuff, and you can hear everybody else. It's like that. It was that clear and that loud. Yeah. But they they were adamant it wasn't anything to do with them, weren't they? 
it, yeah, I mean, it was they had previously sort of a little bit earlier on in that uh, recording, they were asking for the, if there were any spirits in there um, to cool. point out something. Was there something in there that they wanted their attention drawn to? And then, and then it, you hear the, I'm the tallest, but I can't reach it. And then you hear that squeaky noise. Mm. Everything Sorry. all correlated with each other, but nothing was registering on yeah. the monitor apart from that squeak noise and the man's voice, the lady's voice saying that she couldn't reach it just did not register at all. But that voice was loud as loud as all the other voices on there. Mm. So it was a uh, very strange. Well, well, I think as far as it, well, I know we're doing for those of you who wanted to go to the um, uh, Skegness thing on Saturday. Um, <laughs> we are going to be there uh, in when is it? We're doing the Parafest, Paracon. Next year, Wayne and I we're, we're guests there um, at the Paracon, so we'll be doing a live show from there again. And then I have no doubt. Uh, yeah, we are. And are I we? have no doubt. Yeah, yeah, we we, we were invited back to uh, be oh. guests at the show because it went down so well. Um, oh. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be... Um, News to me. <laughs> um, and then um, if, if the uh, Christmas one goes back off again, we'll be back again. So uh, hopefully everybody can make it to that one. But it's... Uh, yeah, they, 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 they have a Paracon there um, uh, every year. I think we're this was the second one. Or third one we're at this year. Oh, what EAPI Parafest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were invited back next year. Yeah, but you said Paracon, not Parafest. Same bloody thing. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Who's <laughs> <laughs> there? So long as we're there. <laughs> Paracon's done by other people. <laughs> The API Paracon Fest thing. What's it? Group gathering. We'll be there, and then uh, hopefully, like I say, there, there, there'll be another Christmas one, and we'll be we'll be hopefully be doing that again. So, should all be good. Send me details. Yeah, I think I think once we get closer to the date and they've got things organised, we'll let everybody know um, all the details and everything else. It was. <laughs> It's as always there. It's always it's, it's it's a really nice place to visit and really and it is uh, a few bits that are active. But like um, when we were in the sitting room, um, every time we've gone in there in that sitting room, and it's always around that fireplace by that spindle. There's always something or somebody there, but there is an animal there as well. So you know, the fact we we're picking up on a couple was it there was a couple of people who passed or was it uh, an animal on a person who passed? Yeah, we've we've had quite a few uh, moments there when some strange stuff has happened, and it's all been animal related. Mm. Um, it was uh, definitely very different. I am not. I'm still like, absolutely. <laughs> I'm still suffering a little bit. Not not as bad as I was yesterday. Yesterday afternoon and yesterday evening, I was I was completely shot to pieces. Well, um, it was. I'm trying to line that up with my glasses. Hello! Anyway, um, yeah, yeah, it was driving back, and then when the snow came down like an absolute bastard, we didn't, like I say, we didn't get back here till, what was it, quarter to five, quarter past five in the morning? Yeah. Something like that, because we, we were doing like 20 miles an hour, and I was doing donuts and handbrake donuts. Well, you, you had to, you had to, because of the snow. We didn't get yeah. none, so. No, we did. Christ, it chucked it down. <laughs> Ellen wants to be precise. You got back at 4.42. Was it four forty two? Yeah, that was when you sent the message to say you got back. Yeah, we were sat in the so car then. So. You were literally forty two minutes behind us because we got here at exactly four o'clock. So and that was driving slowly as well. So yeah, <coughs> we had it, it was perfectly clear all the way home. We had no fog, nothing. We we uh, the, the snow was bad. It was like it, it, it was like being in the Millennium Falcon and going into the drive. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. And I kept saying, saying, punch it, you in. Rachel's like, mm, now you can say that, you know. So now it's good fun. 
it's just gone into light speed. <laughs> you just used the hyperdrive. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It was good fun. <coughs> it was lovely to see everybody. It was nice to see um, Andy up there, uh, another member of the um, Dark Mirror team. Yeah. Uh, he's one, one of our um, admin and archivists, and he was up there. You tell you but that was the first it. time I got to meet Andy, so. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy and Sandra. Nice guy. I used to work with him, do security with him. Um, one of the, um, I've, you know, I've only got like a handful of people I could say I can trust. You could shut the door properly. I could just hear Daisy really well. Sorry, some strange dog's barking at our door. It's not my ex wife, is it? Um, <laughs> no. What was I going to say? Um, yeah, uh, it's <coughs> nice. a handful of people I trust, and, uh, you know, you, obviously you're one. Um, and Andy's another one, so you know I'm not going to say who else because I don't want people to get big heads. So yeah, but um, yeah, I am shattered, dude. Absolutely shattered. And I had, to, I had to be up early for work today and everything, and I'm just like, man, I'm not good. absolutely. Yeah, good. I, I I took an early night last night. Uh, I think it was about half past ten, which is early for me. Um, and I think I got up in the middle. I think I got up about an hour later to go to the loo, and then went back to sleep again. Um, and, and that, that was pretty much it. Evening, Andy. Um, and then I had to get up early again to take Tams into school oh, and see Ethan and Chloe off. And um, I've sort of just been—I don't know—it's just like I've been in a world of my own all day. I've just been sitting here watching. Watching my phone and watching programs, watching be mainly watching documentaries, and I watch the um, the Alaskan Sasquatch. Have um, you used that's an, on, that's, Amazon, that's, on Amazon Prime where they go to Alaska and they see that they go to the cabin and they're going all over the place because this guy Scott had said that he kept hearing things being smacked against trees, but it's in an area where. There isn't anybody else around for miles. Was it a Sasquatch's penis that you can hear being smacked against the tree? Because <laughs> I think if from I was the, a Sasquatch, from the one, sounds that were being made, that. it would have been rather painful had it have been a Sasquatch's penis. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was like someone swinging a baseball bat against a tree. Was it an excited Sasquatch? <laughs> <laughs> but um, they, they literally they sent drones up um, and they found an old cabin that looked like it hadn't been visited in about 20 30 years oh right. um and, and that was all that there was in that area they found a load of tracks from uh black bears and brown bears um a few how more do they know the difference between black bears and brown bears the poo it's not the accents then no okay and they said they said something about the difference in between grizzly and brown bears as well grizzly bears are more inland now, Whereas Grizzly brown, has his own show. Brown bears, brown bears are more coastal. Hmm. So sure they Grizzlies wouldn't, they wouldn't have been in that particular area. <coughs> oh, you want to watch Alaska Monsters too? Um, I've seen. I think that may possibly be it. All to do with the Alaskan Triangle. Not the one you that know. I watched. Um... Hey, William. Let me have a look, see if it's on there. Because it was only a one. There was only one part, which I was a bit annoyed at, because it said um, that there was other episodes. Um, let's have a look. Alaskan. <laughs> I'm sorry. All I've got in my head now is visions of a rather excited Sasquatch trying to call a mate and the way they do it is by banging their massive slongs against the tree and going because it's so painful each time <laughs> yeah no it's, it's called the Alaskan Coastal Sasquatch Area A I'll have to have a look at that join Alex Petakov and the Bigfoot and the Bigfoot Beyond the Trial Crew Trail Crew for part one of the epic adventure into the remote coastal section of the Kane Peninsula of Alaska, known as Area A, to search for evidence of Sasquatch in their most dangerous expedition yet. <coughs> yeah, we, should, we, we should do a couple of times. Is we should watch um, like some sort of 
monster bigfoot something or other um thank you willow um documentary and i think we should review it on here and say yeah it was all right oh, no, yeah. Shit, really. yeah but that was quite interesting it, it didn't really reveal too much but then there's other ones on here. S expedition sasquatch one and two um which were filmed in 2018 and then there was two episodes of searching for sasquatch done in uh 2022 Oh, and the Sir Expedition Sasquatch 3. They've got quite a lot of Sasquatch stuff on it. They haven't got um, like things like Sasquatch Island, have they? Valley of the Sasquatch. Eh? Valley of the Sasquatch. The only way is Sasquatch. <laughs> I'm the Sasquatch. Get me out of here. <laughs> God, with PJ and Duncan. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> the vaults are in. <laughs> the vaults are in, and it's not you, Chewy. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but you're eating this witchy grub. Fuck's <laughs> 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 uh, Lack of sleep. Lack of sleep. It could be yeah. you. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, yes, one of the things I meant to say... Um, what do you, I've, I've been seeing a lot of stuff in regards to, and it's not something that we normally talk about, but I've seen been seeing a lot of stuff in regards to, you know, the the reincarnation recycle, and they think it's it's an infinite thing, and we you get tricked into it. I've been seeing, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot of esoteric things like things. It goes like I that, don't know. I always thought I always thought reincarnation was coming back myself, but. Um... Well, see, my problem with reincarnation is if you can't back, come back and remember who the hell you are, what's the point in doing it? Um, yeah, maybe to learn again. I know, Nigel. Um, I get all that. But myself, I'd rather remember who I was. But I, was, I saw a thing, and it was saying about um, when you when you start to cross over and you see the white light appear and you can hear the voices of your family and everything saying, come this way, come this way, come on, we're waiting for you. Um the thing I saw <laughs> said, turn your back on the light and walk that way and then say, I want to go home. You break the cycle and you'll end up in whatever plane, realm, planet, dimension you originally, originally, originally come from. And then you remember everything. So is that true, do you think? Or is that is that naysaying? Or to be what, honest, that's the first, that's, to be honest, I think that's the, that's the first time I've ever heard of that. That's the first time I've heard of it as well. Um. I mean, I always thought that the idea behind reincarnation was that um, when your physical body passes, the energy that's in it is obviously continuous. So when the physical body has enough, it's past its prime and it's time for it to, to ease off, that energy then moves on. But that energy, you, your spirit as an energy would then have the choice of whether it wanted to move on to another plane or whether it wanted to come back as a physical. I always thought there was an option. I always thought there was an uh, option. Yeah. I didn't realize, um, you know. But I've never heard, I've never heard of the, the oh, well, don't walk to the light because that's not where you want to go. You want to walk away from it. Because See, then... Yeah. When you when you look at that side of things, then that goes against what a lot of the spiritualism side of things go for. A lot of when you move on a spirit, they're saying move to the light, go to that's the right, light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but apparently, that starts the re reincarnation again, and the, and the endless reincarnation, the recycling of the energy. Yeah, I don't know. I'll see if I can find it. I'll see if I can find it again, and I'll send it to you. But it is. I know. I watched it, and I was like, oh. I mean, I'm bothered because I think when you when you are reincarnated, your mindset, your mind, and the knowledge that you've picked up is reset at the same time. But there is an imprint left because you got past life regression, and some people are able to remember through past life regression what they were in previous life. Um, so could there be like? <laughs> I mean, we we know that our minds, our brains themselves, we only use a third of our brains. That's right, yeah, yeah. So 
what is the other two thirds used for? Well, they reckon that um, um, we we have the knowledge, we contain the knowledge, because at the end of the day, the body is literally just the simplest way to, to explain it is a, it's a vehicle, it's a car to enable us, because we're energy beings, to interact on this particular <coughs> plane or this dimension. So if we if we go to a different dimension, different plane, we'd have a different type of body, and so on and so forth. Um, but they reckon that we have the knowledge. It's in our DNA. It's in it's encoded in our in a, a special bit of our brain because our brains operate in something like eight different dimensions, don't they? So our brain constantly accesses all the different things that we can't remember and we can't go. Oh, let's. Which I've always found a bit odd when you've got all that stuff but you can't access it although you can but you can't and you've got all your, your your previous reincarnations and you it's there inside you to remember but we can't because we had our we had our dna altered and we had we have things switched off so when the, the fact that we got that was it 75 percent junk dna if that was unlocked is one of the things in that that would be unlocked apart from longevity would that be able to ask, access like for instance, the Akashic Records or our own version of the Akashic Records where we remember everything. Well, I mean, that's that's where the issue lies, isn't it? Because it's down to each individual's belief system. And when you've got so many different belief systems out there, which one is the actual right one? I don't think there is any right one at all, personally. Because all the stuff that you and I have done and studied and looked at and talked about, it's still all points to don't get me wrong i don't think there's a single singular god i think there's uh, half and all gods yeah and i think that the the one half and all of gods was the same one that appeared to the different cultures in different guises like the greeks the romans the celtics the the indians and so on and so forth ad infinitum but when you realize that we aren't the first humans on the earth, we aren't the first intelligent life on this earth, we're like humans 3.0, 2.5, whatever you want. And when you <laughs> listen, to, when you look at all the, the, the stuff that was said about um, uh, Atlantis and things like that, and then when you read more, especially in the, the, the Crystal Skulls of Toth, Crystal Skulls, Crystal Scrolls of Toth, they talk about there being mega cities all around the world. There's only a few. It was like 10 or 20, but all these mega cities were linked. And Atlantis was one of these. Hi, Jen. It was one of these mega cities. And that when it went boom, it, it affected all the other mega cities. You know, um, and you've got all this, this stuff that says we had our DNA altered. We had this change. We had that change. We were originally an indigenous species to the earth. And they put their DNA in us to make us their. Uh, slaves work for so rather work. than saying a parthenon of gods could it be a parthenon of species superior beings. yeah it was it was it was superior beings with vastly better we just uh, we just called them gods because they were superior to us yeah and we had and the technology that they had we still haven't got now so back yeah. then when we were shitting in our hands and clapping we were like oh, it's good <laughs> And they had the technology to appear to different uh, cultures in different yeah. guises, you know, and that's why. And this, this is this is where the belief systems all come in. And, and okay. you see all these arguments about which one is the true religion and, and all of that. But if you look at it properly and follow timelines and everything else, oh, most okay. of these modern religions aren't the original religion in the first place. The original religion that really should have been governing this planet no, no longer exists no and that was because because they say that the oldest one was judaism and it's not uh before that you had the celts and before that you had the druids before that you had paganism and all this stuff where you worship nature and blah, blah, blah. <coughs> you the very very first one was where you just were in awe of a group of beings with superior knowledge, superior technology, and we shat ourselves because we didn't want to get wiped out just like that. Uh, well, look at look at um, Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah, wiped out in a single night, and they found what they think Gomorrah was, and where it was, they've they found energy uh, spikes from a nuclear hit, and it's been or something akin to a nuclear bomb going off, but it wasn't. It was a strike. And they found it, and they found where the energy hit and where it hit the ground and everything. And it, it says, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, God didn't smite them with comets. 
with comets, missiles or blasts hit the damn place and leveled it. You know? Exactly. And then when you look at you know stuff we've spoken about before, all the places in India that's got all the 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 radiation signals of um of thermonuclear yeah, and the depleted uranium in yeah. Siberia. That's right, one point five million years old, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, and so this again, is... depleted uranium is a man-made, as we said before, depleted uranium is a man-made process, and especially one and a half million years ago, it's something that humankind weren't capable of doing because we weren't around then. That's right. So what was around then? Exactly, exactly, exactly. There was people before us. Look at Bimini Road. Straight lines don't exist in nature. Look at Bimini Road. Yeah, it's quite and a nice think, road. It's it's quite a nice road actually. There's a couple of shops on there that I quite like. You know, to. there is. I I wonder why there's there's always there's always a spa shop on there. Always. <laughs> but they okay, reckon it's that Moo. They reckon it's if it's from either Moo or Lemuria, don't they? Yeah. So. And there's there's a lot of places that they have found um, specifically underwater um, that they are saying, well, hang on a minute. This looks like a like a road. Yeah. And when they looked at the the, the brickwork for it, they've stood there and said these brick the, this this concrete or these bricks, boulders, whatever, they've been shaped and they've been placed. That's right. But they're under so many feet of water yeah. that if you were to look at the timelines and take it back, the they would have been literally in the air so they would have been above water level that's right thousands of years ago and they would they should have been there before we were about yeah so it's you know it's a case of like with the um the, the temples in peru you know they're there but they've been put there by people or beings of a superior intellect to actually put bricks and blocks together without using cement that are so tightly compact together you couldn't even get a cigarette paper in between the blocks yeah and they prove it so job. many times see you later mate um yeah it's it's just <sighs> You guys in the chat room, like, I mean, you know yourself, a lot of us were, it, it's drummed into you about religion. It, you, you know, you are indoctr indoctrinated it into school. I mean, good God, I used to be in a church choir and everything. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, the only reason I joined it was I used to fancy a girl that was in it. I've done bell ringing and everything before. But since throwing myself into this um, <laughs> years ago, um, and stud everything that I've studied and, and Wayne and I have talked about and all the shows we've done and all the stuff I've done before, everything points to we're not who we think we were uh, or are. Our, half of our DNA, it's been proved we had a, we had an evolutionary leap. It took 20,000 years, but in evolutionary terms, that's like that. And that's when we went from knuckle dragging to farming, which is impossible to do unless you've got help and then when you if you bear with me on this one if you go with that and you take in the legends of the anunnaki and the sumerians and all that stuff on them they talk about the same beings and then you take that in with the king's list you remember you know the sumerian king's mm -hmm. list where these these guys live for 75,000 <coughs> 100,000 200,000 years and this that and the other so if you've got these anunnaki beings putting their DNA into the native species and they're living for thousands and thousands of years. It's nothing to them. 20,000 years is absolutely is nothing to them. They can do it and then sit back and watch and then go, there you go. We made that. Oh, hang on. They can live as long as us. Let's just tweak their DNA a little bit so that they don't live as long as us. And this, that, and the other. makes a lot of sense. And then when you look at all the, the, as Wayne just said, when you look at all the religious texts, the religious books, they're the same. People are going to go, no, my God's better than your God. No, no, stop it. Look at your books. Look at the timelines. Every single one's got a flood. Every single thing, every single one's got somebody who survives that flood. Every single one's got these things talk to you. They never say they can do this, that, and the other. Put it to put two and two together and wake yourself up a bit and you'll, you'll find the truth. And, it, and especially if you look at, if you go right the way back to the Egyptians before, I can't remember which one it was now, said you know you will worship one god 
Oh, Arkenaten. It was Arkenaten that started the one god thing. That's right. Yep. Before then, there was dozens of vegan. gods. Yeah, that's right. There was and dozens of gods before they, Arkenaten. Yeah. They had the Parthenon. So, the Sumerians did as well. So how can any one religion, any one modern religion, turn around and say there is only one true God when actually no, because if you look back before Akhenaten, there wasn't one true God. There was dozens. Well, when you look at the conclave that they had, you know, when they were deciding about what books would go in the Bible. Yeah. There were Pete, there were members from religions that had Parthenons that entered that came to that conclave and said, Oh, we can put yeah. this one in. But it's like, a, it's like a lot of things. It's like when you look at Christmas, Christmas is only when it is because it was it was caught in line with the pagan festivals. Aliens! So, Sorry. so the Christian festival of Christmas was actually brought back to coincide with the pagan festival. So technically, the, the Jesus that the most, most Christian religions know wasn't born in December. He was born January, in January. Mm. I think it was something like January the 27th. And they brought it back to coincide with the pagan right. festival, which yeah. merged oh, the yeah, two yeah. together. And Eshtar, Eshtar, the, the, the festival of Eshtar, which is Easter. Yeah. You know? So um, <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things there that have been done to try and push the original religions out of the way to make favor for this new one religion and in a way it's a new world order that's basically what it was it was a new world order this is the religion you will follow and so people followed it then there's another religion comes along well this is the religion you should follow because this religion's better than that religion and that's when the wars all start yeah so you then get this this constant to and fro between different religions, different countries, and so on and so forth, when really when you go right the way back to the be-all and end-all of it, there was one belief system that was run by a group of beings. Well, they reckon that also um, everywhere was linked with, you know, the the... the the people before us, everywhere was linked. There were taught teleporters, this, that, and the other. But there was only one language. And the whole reason you've got angels and demons is you had Enki and Enlil, who went to war with each other. These are the uh, um, Anunnaki. One wanted us to do well, and eventually we could have got better than them. And the other one was jealous of the fact that we were being treated so so well and being cared for. And he was like, no, just to, just get rid of him. Just get rid of him. And uh, I can't remember which one's which. One is the good guy. One is the bad guy. But the bad guy, whenever anything would go wrong on his side of the planet uh, and with humans, he'd just go, oh, wipe them out. Get rid of them. We'll just get some new ones in. And that's what you should do every time. You go, bang, kill them all and start again. Um, and then the good one was like, hang on, no, you shouldn't be doing that. And then they went to war with each other uh, over us. And that is why you get angels and demons because – Early us saw people with an unimaginable technology scrapping. One lot was nice, one lot was nasty, one lot was doing despicable things to us and to the good guys who were the angels. And the angels were helping us, or the good Anunnaki were helping us and killing off the bad Anunnaki, the demons. And that's where it all comes about like that. And then they just said, sod it, let them get on with it, and they left. Yeah. Yeah. But they reckon they're coming back at some point. Well, I mean, you've—I mean, for years. I mean, I don't know. I haven't heard nothing about it lately. But Nibiru or Nubiru was supposed yeah, to have been out there, and they so no. many times they'd say, "Oh, it's there, it's there, it's coming, it's there, it's coming." Well, we'll take your time, you know. Call cool, year. Well, there is something, isn't there, right on the edge of the solar system that, that's coming to. Uh, being because I've, I've been keeping an eye on the reports and there, ha there has been something that's been seen uh, uh, has appeared right on the edge of the solar system and it is <coughs> getting closer there was um i can't remember when it was now it was a couple of years ago wasn't there there was this object that came into our solar system and then did a, a bizarre maneuver and it was almost as if something, something pushed it out of the way 
and they yeah. reckon it was it was powered by some form of intelligence. Oh, because that they, the Dyson sphere. They, they thought there was a Dyson something with a Dyson sphere. No, 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 no. There was something came into our solar system, and it was heading in our direction. And then, without any notification or any warning, it just went on a different course. It just turned, and it shouldn't have done because, to all known physics, an right. object would not move like that unless it had hit something first or something had hit it. It literally went, it was coming in the solar system and then all of a sudden just went boom. Like, it was like it got deflected off of something. As if something had either, it had either I turned something itself about that, yeah. or it hit something and it had moved on and gone out of our solar system. It was almost as if it, what, something didn't want it getting close to us. Yeah. And then there was that other one that was like a really elongated shape. And but annoyed, they reckon. Yeah. They reckon that was that was powered by unknown sources. <coughs> I, think, I think that wound me up about that and annoyed me about that. Was it was coming here? It was bloody. It was obvious it wasn't a fucking meteor, right? And this, that, and the other that they were trying to say. And then all the scientists and stuff came out and said, "Yeah, that 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 was intelligently made, intelligently designed, and intelligently controlled because it's using the sun to slingshot and get the energy to bugger off." And then. Yeah. That's when they, they, and it was again the American government, nobody else, just the American government came out and went, oh, actually, no, it was a piece of rock, it was this, that, and the other. And then they, our government went, oh, yeah, 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 you're right, it was a piece of rock, rock. Yeah. And now they, 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 they've, they've all said, actually, it could have been intelligent design. And now they're saying that we've had um, uh, probes sent here from, other, from a mothership. I remember that one a few months ago. They reckon mm -hmm. that we've, got, we've had probes. Coming into our sis, our um, system to check the planet out from a mother. Well, it, it would explain. Well. It would explain a lot of UFO sightings. And it, I think as well, if you had the technological know-how, and you wanted to explore an area that you'd never been to before, you didn't know the setup or the layout of it all. You didn't know what was already there. Apparently, you've got uh, spooky pussy. Well, one of my cats is making a noise in the background, and I don't know what it's doing, so I can't see it. I've got one behind the laptop there. And I've got one sitting on the draining board, and one's floating about down there. I think it's trying to go into the bin. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's I've lost track now of what I was talking about. I'm all right. <laughs> probes. Right? Yeah. yeah. If you Alien probes! If you wanted to go into an area that you knew nothing about or anything before, you'd research it. As, yeah, as exactly. a modern day human being, um, if I wanted to go to say, I don't know, never been to Venice. So if I wanted to go to Venice and I knew nothing about Venice, what, what sites to see or what hotel to stay at, I'd do my research first. Yeah. So I would go onto the internet, look at pictures of it and so on. Or I'd speak to people that had been there. Now, if you're going to another planet, you don't know what's going to be on that planet. You don't know whether it's going to be hostile or friendly. So rather than risk um, losing the human element so or the physical element by losing yeah. people, by taking them to a possible hostile planet, you would send a probe down there <laughs> or cough up a lung or a cough drone. Up, send a drone down, do the tour, see what's going on, see whether it would be hostile or not. Nine times out of ten, if they'd see the way we're bickering and arguing at the moment on this planet, they'd go back and say, don't don't bother going down there because it's a waste of space. Um, it, it's ridiculous. It really is. They're just stupid at the moment. With so, I mean, that is what you would do. You know, it, it to me, it would make sense that that is what you would do first before you ever set foot on an, on an unknown planet. You would check it out first because you don't know what you're letting yourself in for. Well, you'd have thought so, yeah. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. You send the send it in to have a look before you send in the main guys. I don't. I, I, 
I don't know if we're going to, because people said, oh, invasion and this, that, the other. I don't think that's happening purely because we've had we've had visitors here for years. And the government, we, we all know the government knows all about it. And the government knows we all know about it. And that's why they're drip feeding a lot faster than they have been doing. So, yeah, you know, it'll all come out very soon anyway. But, uh, it's it's getting to a stage where, well, I've been saying it for ages, that the social media now is is way too far ahead of everything else. Yeah. And you can't hide anything anymore. You know, it's, it's, it's basically like saying invasion of privacy. There's no such thing as invasion of privacy anymore. We're being watched from just about every angle possible. Um, Especially you know, from these things. Yeah, so, you know, regardless of, of what goes on out there, they can say, oh, no, there's no such thing as this, there's no such thing as that. But sometimes videos, regardless of AI, regardless of CGI, some of those videos out there are authentic. But yeah. like I've also been saying is, is that they've probably employed people purposely to go onto social media to flood it with crap so that you then find it harder to sort out the real stuff from the fake stuff. That's what I, I was. We were talking about, wasn't it? The other, was it uh, when we were on Saturday? And, yes, we were. We were all talking about it on yeah. Saturday. Um, yeah. Why would they invade their possible cousins? Well, according to Anunnaki law, the sorry Sumerian law, the Anunnaki were actually uh, uh, they were coloured gentlemen, weren't they? Uh, the Anunnaki are uh, coloured or black, whatever you want to call it. Say it. But, but also, uh, also there was the. Um, we had the Nephilim. So there was crossbreeding going on. Hmm. So obviously the you have the Nephilim and the Nephilim then mated again. So eventually we got to us. The Anunnaki aren't too happy about the fact that there was this crossbreeding program go on to get to our stage. And that's where the hassle became between the, the two, the good and the bad Anunnaki. Yeah, because we're a very watered-down version of what was original. Yeah, so they're not going to be, in in a sense, if it is the, the bad side of the Anunnaki, he was to turn around and say, look, we're going to go back to Earth and we're going we're gonna to reset them again. And could that have possibly been what has been happening? If we've had resets or we've had additives put into our DNA and things like that, could it have been the, the bad Anunnaki that have come back to try and alter us? Or was it the good Anunnaki that have come back to alter us for our benefit? I would like to say it would be the good Anunnaki come back to alter us for our benefit rather It'd be than... It would be nice to good. Yeah, it would be nice to think about the good. Um, so, I mean, at the end of the day, whether... I mean... Why would they invade us if they're possible cousins? Why is there wars on this planet? Full stop. You know, well, if, without going if you into go it. by if you go by things like the Christian Bible, we're all related anyway. Yeah. Um, and yet, you know, half the time we're all interested in bitching and arguing about a bit of land or some oil underneath the sea and and stuff like that. And wars have broken out because of it. An interplanetary war would be no different. Look at all that crap that's going on in the Middle East at the moment. Again, we're not going to go into it, but, you know. Ridiculous. There, there will always be things as wars. And that's going to be without a doubt, because there will always be a difference of opinion, regardless of what it's over. There will always be a difference in opinion. Um, well, exactly. And rather than just saying, look, we're all human beings. Let's just get on with it. Stop being a bunch of idiots. You know. Yeah. It's pathetic. It really is. I mean, uh, wars are either fought over religion or money. And at the end of the day, the ones behind the religion and the money things, it's always the war pigs. And the war pigs are closely related <coughs> to the uh, top politicians and the top clergy. Yeah. My blood's red. So's yours. So's exactly. most of the people on this planet. If there's any green or blue blood going on out there, then I'd be worried. But at the moment, we ain't found it. Well, the only blue blood, as far as I know, is horseshoe crabs, isn't it? Is it? He, he, uh, no, I think there may be something else as there as blue blood as well, but <coughs> something like that. So, um, 
They think that Adam and Eve were the first proto-humans made, uh, or the first ones allowed to propagate. Um, this, Lilith, this is where I had such a laugh at school, because I once said if Adam, uh, Eve was made from Adam, Eve would have been about three inches tall. Because if you go by the, if you go by the religious text, God took a rib out of Adam to make Eve. No matter how much stretching of that rib he would ever have done, Eve would have only been about three inches tall. Do you know where they take uh, stuff from <laughs> to do graphs and and things? And I've been watching it on a lot of uh, things. Backside. They take, they, and the ribs, they take the marrowbone out from the ribs. Oh, I thought you were talking about skin. No, no, no. To 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 do uh, internal grass and to make things and stuff, they take it from the uh, the uh, marrowbone side. Yeah. Do you and reckon like, that? One? And like we've been saying, because of their advancing technology, they would be able to grow the cells needed. That's right. Yeah. And in a short period of time, to actually to actually cultivate. And we've we've done it recently. We've we've done we've grown human flesh on the back of a mouse, and we use fish skin for grass. Yeah. So, um, well, we do um, uh, pig transplants. Yeah. Hearts and everything. Hearts, heart hearts, and, hearts and lungs. Um, so, you know, they have probably quite possibly have done that. But then again, that's all saying if that side of that religion is correct. Because there are so many things at fault with a lot of religions that don't make sense with the common timelines. Only, not, only it's been pushed. Um, it's pushed so that you forget the actual timelines and you, you see what they class as the important stuff. But the real important stuff has been sort of been blindsided. You, you've been that's been pushed away gradually, so that you forget all about it. Things that don't make sense, like dinosaurs. Yeah, we know dinosaurs are older than human beings. You know, but where's that in the Bible? Dragon. <laughs> Because dinosaur, the word dinosaur didn't exist in it until the 18th century. Exactly. Well, no, because no one even knew about dinosaurs yeah, in the 18th century. They used to use the word dragon. You know, if they'd if they'd have dug up a rather large bone, they would have they would have classed it as a dragon. Dragon bone, that's right. <coughs> but that's um, what say. Oh, hello, gone a bit wobbly. Religion, you know, religion bastardizes anything that goes against it and doesn't agree with it. Take, for example, Lilith, who was meant to be Adam's first wife. Uh, and Lilith and him didn't stay together because she had her own free will and wanted to go off and do stuff. But, And that's what they said in, in religion. They said she was this, that, and the other. And then she was turned into the first vampire because she was so horrible and this, that, and the other. Lilith was actually a was either Babylonian or Sumerian uh, queen. Um, and she ruled the kingdom with her husband, uh, whichever the bit of land it was, uh, was really popular, really well loved, really well liked. The husband died and you had the out outside um, kings from other areas come in and say, right, a woman can't, is not allowed to, you can't look after this land uh, unless your husband's in. And she, and she basically said, well, fuck you, yes, I am. And then they uh, invaded her kingdom and they were going to get her and she knew that that, that would mean rape coercion you will do this and rather than get captured and have that done to her she threw herself out of the top floor of one of the the buildings and killed herself and then because she did that and she was the first well you know one of the first women to go fuck you i'm standing up for myself even though she took her own life the uh the the religion then bastardized her and down throughout the, the millennia she was bastardized and turned into the first um vampire all because she was a strong willed woman, that was it. So and then when you, you look at it, and when you look at it, look at the punishments some religions have for the silliest of things. Yep. <laughs> Stoning. Yep. If you're gay, they chuck you off the top of the buildings and things like that. 
And uh, well, you got things like in uh, the Arab nations, they they chop your hands off for theft, don't they? I don't know what you. Do I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, so I mean, you know, it's how you perceive it. I like to say, you look at most of the religions that we we go by today. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, most of the religions that are around today, that are claiming to have been around for so many thousands of years. Go back in the timelines and you'll find that none of those yeah. religions were around yeah. previously. These are all new religions that other people have concocted to get you to go in their way of thinking or their their form of lifestyle. But you go back way before them and you'll find it's a completely different system. Well, it's like... I mean, um, I will. I will just say to anybody watching this that they, what, what we're saying about religion and stuff is not our own uh, beliefs. Because we no, we're right. not anti-religious. It's what we've researched. It's how so, we look at it. If yeah. we we look at it, religions, most modern day religions, and most religions, full stop, made by man to control man, aren't as old as human beings. Fact. Yeah. Exactly. And look at all these ridiculous stuff, like the Church of Scientology and crap like that. And uh, the Book of Mormon. Oh, I was walking through the woods one day and I found this golden book glowing in the, in the ground. <laughs> Did you know? You know? Um, anybody can start a religion up. You know, oh, I saw this. If you're, if you're good at convincing, people, convincing enough people that this, that, and the other happen, you could be walking past an Ann Summer shop. A golden dildo flies out of the window because somebody's thrown it by accident. Oh, it came crashing through the... It came crashing through the miasma and it was glowing and it, yay, verily it vibrated in my hand. <laughs> we must worship this. And some bloody idiots will worship it. Yeah. That's how silly religion is. It, yeah. You, you give someone a belief system that they think is going to work and you're going to have a follower. And all you need to do is get that one person to follow. And that could lead to 10 people following. That 10 people can lead to 100, 100 to 1,000, yeah. 1,000 to a yeah. million. And it just bam, yeah. and it would be quick. Yeah. I my mean, God's better. My big invisible person in the sky is better than your big invisible. I, person in the sky. For example, and this is going to sound really strange using this as an example because, in a sense, it's got nothing to do with religion. But you look at Bruce Lee when he first went to America and he taught yeah. one person, Jeet Kune Do. And now look. And then all of a sudden, Within within weeks, he didn't have one student. He had about thirty students. Yeah. Then within months, he had a hundred students. And now, Jeet Kune Do is taught all over the world. I've done Jeet Kune Do. It's by really good. His by his disciples, you know, the people that originally went to him, and that's how they would be classed. His dis original disciples, the first lot of people that he yeah. taught Jeet yeah. Kune Do yeah. to have then passed on that knowledge to the next lot of people. So then 30 went on to teach that many, 100 people more. That 100 people then went to teach a 1,000 more, and so on. So now Jeet Kune Do is, is followed all over the world by so many people as a martial art, not as a religion, but as a martial art. So that's how religion would work. One person well, tells 10, 10 tells 100, so on and so forth, until it, it, it spreads even more. Well, look at the martial art I invented, Tai Ramakabi. And the only reason I invented it uh, was because I saw a lot of crap in martial arts that shouldn't be. And I took all the crap out and built it around people like myself, other disabled people. Um, I took out the, uh, if you're too tall, you can't do it. If you're too short, you can't do it. If you're too fat, you're thin, not strong enough. If you're a girl, if you're a boy, I took all that crap out. I got rid of most of the catters and just kept in the basic blocking stuff. And now, as far as I'm aware, um, two of my old students who uh, got up to uh, Black Belt are still doing it down. One's in Paint Painton? Plymouth. One's in Plymouth. And I think one's still somewhere in Somerset, and they're still doing it, and they've still got lots of pupils, and it's gradual. And I got I got officially recognised a few years ago, you know, and up and down the country for it. So, and that's from one person, little old disabled me, yeah. spent seven years leaping about, going, "This will work, that won't work, this is crap, that wouldn't work on the street," and now it is, it's it's been done, you know. And I've been asked to go back to do it again, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. 
But yeah, exactly the same thing. Yeah. Same thing. You know. But ultimately, when you look at it, all religion is younger than humankind. Yep. And that's look fact. at you can't deny it. It's fact. <laughs> well, look at look at all this just, just horseshit. Like religion kills. Religion gets you to kill another religion. It gets you to kill the people from that religion. <gasps> he said that about your god. Go and kill him. And that's yeah. literally how it goes down over the centuries. It's look, kill look or at be killed. Now. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. If these gods are real, would they really want you wiping out mankind because the other one's pissed <laughs> off? Well, I mean, I, I said, I've said that before. What what kind of god would want its own creation to destroy itself? Yeah, you know. And I I, I struggle to come to terms with that every time. Um, I mean, up until the point when my granddad was killed, I was quite happy to go with the flow. Mm. But then when my granddad was killed, that was it. I, I then f sort of picked over everything with a fine tooth comb. Yeah. And that was when I realised that things didn't make sense. Timelines. They the don't, fact they don't. that the religion my nan was peddling on to me was actually younger than human beings. The timelines didn't add up. None of it made sense. The Bible made no sense to me. Then I discovered things were missing from the Bible that really should be there because if the bible is to go by the life of jesus and 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 god himself then why are so many episodes as such got removed and, and then you because obviously you find out about the book of magdalene the book of enoch these these are things that as as far as i see from doing my research the book of enoch and the book of mary magdalene are quite important very important to any form of religion or any form of life or way of life the book of enoch and the book of magdalene are probably quite pivotal books basically on the same lines of the book of genesis and phil collins can't do that anymore <laughs> no phil god bless him he ain't capable but <laughs> Book of Enoch and Book of Magdalene would be on the same lines as the Genesis. That's that's how I would have seen it. But it got redacted. It got taken away. got removed yep. from the Bible. Along with God knows how many others. Because I don't think we'll ever know the full truth as of to how many books there were in the original Bible. We're just being told there was, oh, this is missing, that's missing. There's so many books. But the only way we're going to know the truth is if we wander down into them vaults. Oh. Have a look and see exactly what's there. Can you imagine whenever that you know religion comes <coughs> and those places get stormed? Because it will happen one day. They, they're not going to be in charge of everybody forever. One day no. it will happen and they will be overthrown. Um, but can you imagine what's going to be found in those vaults? I, I personally, I personally think there's plundered gold there from World War Two. Wouldn't surprise me. There's there's supposed to be alien artifacts down there as well. Well, we That's know true. for a fact what we're talking about. We know fact that the Catholic Church helped a lot of Nazi generals right. get out of Berlin at the end of the war. That's right. And they, a lot of them went to Catholic churches in northern and southern Spain. And were given new identities and shipped over to Argentina and Brazil. Here's an interesting. <laughs> yes, I do. Yep. Yes, I do. We we I don't know yep. if you saw it. We were just talk. We, one of the things we spoke about was the, <laughs> um, the depleted uranium that's been found in what they think is the remains of an old mine from 1.5 million years ago. You don't get depleted uranium in nature. It has to be done through a manufacturing process. It's the only way you can get it. This is 1.5 million years old. How yeah. the hell did that get there? So, um, I mean, human beings are older than 10,500 years old. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. So, and like, like, like we were saying, if you look at the timeline of religion, timelines of religions don't go back as far as human beings do. 
you look at any of the religions that are out there, not one of them goes back to the very first human. Look at Gobliteki. You know all the different, um, it's supposed to be the oldest structure ever found, man-made structure, yeah? On it, on its, and it was it was deliberately buried. They don't know why it was deliberately buried. But on its pillars, you've got star systems and you've got depictions of UFOs and beings in UFOs. Uh, and talking about and it and it talks about these star systems and they reckon if you can translate it it's saying you know oh they came from here came here and helped us the same as it <coughs> said in so many other religions and all that stuff that was said in the different religions that came for that conclave to make the bible because it wasn't just the catholic faith it was all different religions anything that didn't fit the narrative anything to do with beings from other planets anything to do with our gods be uh being beings from other planets and not the gods anything like that was instantly dismissed and chucked out well we can't control them we like we want them to follow our rules we can't they won't follow our rules if they think that oh, this this guy is from Athens and Turi. now nah, get rid of it mary jesus had a wife and kids no nah, we can't have people thinking that he's had sex now nah, get rid of it you know he yeah. was a man he was a man but the we spoke about this <laughs> week, didn't we? um there's something going around, well, something going around. There's, there was a thing that I saw that he's making the rounds saying that uh, Jesus and a few other high up religious icons were actually hybrids and that the star of Bethlehem that followed and the light shone down and hit Mary was actually a ship and it went boom and she was impregnated. And so were the other people who gave birth to various yeah. That is a very popular claim that Mary Mary was um, the very first alien abductee. Um, and that's why it's a virgin birth. And was artificially inseminated. Yeah. Um, and so much the, sense. The, the the star that they that the they that shone over the stable was in fact the 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 visiting craft that guided the three kings and the three wise men to that stable yeah and it had these guys flying it well not particularly that one because well no no not, not particularly that one anyway but where's the other one uh, everything is still in the car i haven't been in the car and got everything out we got back in and we were so knackered we, we, <laughs> we, we said to each other should we just go to bed yeah and we, we literally came in Kettle on, cup of tea, upstairs, bed. Go on. We got all our stuff sitting in the hallway. <laughs> I just haven't taken it out. I, there, had, yeah. I had to take it out because I had the kids backwards and forwards and everything else yesterday. So I'm like, you know what, well, I better put it all in the hallway, get it ready to do. So, but my alien's still sitting in the car on the dashboard. Turned Mine a few still, we, we put them on, on the, the rear parcel shelf, but they're going to come in and they're going to go up here. <laughs> so, and on that note, we shall end this here because I'm. Flipping knackered, and I think you are too. And it is we've been on we've been on for an hour. You and hope I, I am going. too. <laughs> so I think you are too. Um, and let me just have a look bit. at our dates before you guys all disappear. So not next Monday, but the one after will be the last show of the year, and it will be the Christmas quiz show on the eighteenth of December. Um, and on the 11th next week, we'll probably carry on talking about this actually because I find this stuff fascinating. And judging by the comments and everything that we get sent, you guys do too. So we'll carry on talking about this. We, we all we all know we all know people from other planets are here, and they have been for a long time. The governments have said that, yeah, okay, yeah, we admit it, yeah, they have been here. So and, we all know what's going on. And I'm going to plug it now while I get a chance because I haven't got many weeks left to plug it. But on Christmas Eve at uh, 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 10 p.m. 10 p.m. GMT, so it's 10 p.m. UK time, I will be live on Wayne Seaton Presents Spook and Ori um, with the traditional Christmas ghost story um, being read live on on my um, my my other Facebook group, Wayne Seaton Presents yeah. Spook and Ori. So as soon as I um, get the advert put up for it, I will share it into the Dark Mirror Radio Show's um, uh, feed. Um, and if anybody fancies coming over on Christmas Eve at 10 p.m. and listen to a good old traditional ghost story, then uh, it'll be great I to see I might very well join you as well, mate. I might very well come on to that. Well, I'm hoping, and I've still got to talk, but I may have uh, Nick Moulet... Uh, joining me live as well 
um, reading a ghost story from America. So that'll be nice. It'll be me reading That'd mine cool. first, and then Nick will be reading his after me. So we'll try to, um, if I can get a few more people to read a ghost story of their choice um, in between, you know, to make a little live feed of it. That'll be uh, 10 p.m. on Christmas Eve. There you go. Bit join them. I'll be there. E I might even read your story if you want me to. If you would like to, sir, that would be very nice of you. Okay, I, I shall have to find one. I shall have to find one. Because I think Rachel is working Christmas Eve. So, mm. sucks. But yeah. All right, guys, join us next week, half past nine, and we will be on time next week because it was my fault. I completely, <laughs> completely forgot. I'm knackered, and I was just sat there, and I saw somebody try to ring me, and I'm like, mm. and I looked at the, uh... oh, I'll, I'll read your story. <laughs> um, I, I looked at my thing, and then saw saw a message from Wayne saying, you got a link? And I'm like, link for what? Somebody sent us a link. And then I went, shit! <laughs> and then ran up here. So, yeah, thank you ever so much for joining us, everybody, and uh, everybody who's watching us in the week. Again, thank you. Remember, if you see anything um, and you want to set, let us know, you can either go to our website, uh, thedarkmirrorshow.co.uk, and there is a link to the WhatsApp there. Click the WhatsApp button, it'll come straight through. Or you can either message us individually, or you can send us an email at thedarkmirrorradioshow.co.uk. Um, either way, we'll get to, back to you. And remember, keep your eyes to the skies and aliens! So we will see you guys uh, next week. See you later. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. You're welcome. Bye. See ya.